fossils show how long-necked reptiles lost their heads. The discovery suggests that long necks which helped some prehistoric reptiles catch food, were tempting targets for predators. In 1830, Henry D.L.A. Betch, an English paleontologist, composed a painting of Doria Antiquia a vision of Mesozoic oceans. When picturing a long-necked marine reptile, he depicted its throat clamped between the jaws of a monstrous ichthyosaurus. Almost two centuries have passed without direct evidence of the neck-biting DLA Betch imagined. But research published Monday in the journal Current Biology has provided gory and extremely rare evidence that predators saw the lengthy, outstretched necks of reptiles swimming around prehistoric seas as an irresistible target. The victim was Tanis Trafoys, whose neck is completely unique in the fossil record, said Stefan Speakman, a paleontologist with the State Museum of Natural History in Stuttgart, Germany, and an author on the study. The structure, which made up half the animal's body, was constructed from 13 bizarrely elongated and interlocking vertebrae, creating a neck as stiff as a fishing rod. Getting any insight into how these extreme structures functioned with potential weakness and strengths is very important dr. Speakman said, Dr. Speakman's doctoral research revealed that two separate species of Tonistrophoys, one small, another almost 20 feet long, lived in the shallow lagoons of the Triassic Alps, most likely hunting fish from perches on the seafloor. In the course of that research, Dr. Speakman studied a pair of specimens from both species, each composed solely of a head and neck. In both animals, the neck is broke and in the back half, Dr. Speakman said, it's like snapping a broomstick, Dr. Speakman shared the specimens with his office mate, Udold Muyel, a paleontologist who specializes in analyzing predator-prey interactions in fossils, particularly bite marks on bones. After an afternoon with the fossils at their resting place in Zurich, they concluded that the necks had been bitten apart. The broken portion of the bones look like if you break a chicken bone, Dr. Muyel said. The bone was broken when it was still fresh, and most likely while the animal was still alive. The team measured the distance between bite marks on the larger Tonistrophoys and compared them with the jaws of various predators sharing the habitat. The likely culprit was either a large Nothosaur, seal-like ancestors of Plesiosaurs, or one of two large, predatory Ichthyosaurs, Dr. Muyol said. The smaller Tonistrophoys may have been attacked by a smaller marine reptile or a large fish. Both animals had most likely been struck from above, the team concluded, possibly by a predator interested more in their meaty bodies than their spindly necks or tiny heads. They're possibly preferentially targeting the same region of the neck dr. Muyol said, far enough away from the head to make it hard for the animal to defend itself. Tonistrophoys is the only marine reptile known to suffer such unceremonious decapitation. The long necks of plesiosaurs, reptiles that emerged after Tonistrophoys went extinct and lingered until the end of the Mesozoic period, are made up of many bulky vertebrae, all buried in muscle and blubber, Dr. Muyol said. While they may also have gotten it in the neck, a very thick layer of flesh and skin around the neck means that predators might not have left any marks on the vertebrae. But even if the long neck was a weak spot for predators, the researchers note it was clearly a remarkably successful evolutionary strategy. Many different groups of fish-eating marine reptiles independently evolved elongated necks over 175 million years. Even Tonistrophoys's family proved a success story, spreading across Triassic shorelines from modern Europe to China and lasting for 10 million years. Evolution is a game of trade-offs, Dr. Speakman said. In the long run, the risk of having a long neck was worth it for this animal. In other words, sticking your neck out can be worth it for the species, even if you personally get your head bitten off, making sense of one of the most baffling animals that ever lived. Important mysteries have been solved about a reptile with a giraffe-like neck that hunted prey 242 million years ago. Nearly 250 million years ago, a very odd reptile patrolled the shorelines and coves of the Triassic Alps. Called Tonistrophoys, it had a toothy head and a body echoing that of modern monitor lizards, but between them stretched a horizontal, giraffe-like neck. The question of how this 20-foot creature used that 9-foot neck has bedeviled paleontologists for over 100 years and it is seen as one of the most baffling animals that ever lived said Stefan Speakman, a paleontologist at the University of Zurich in Switzerland. How could this animal even breathe or swallow? And then there is the evolutionary question. 
Why on earth did this animal evolve this ridiculously long neck? But research published last week in Current Biology, including a new reconstruction of its skull, shows evidence that its body was primed for an aquatic hunting strategy and that the creature came into varieties, regular and miniature size. Tonistrophoys was initially described in the 1850s based on a few tube-like bones, only in the 1930s when more complete fossils emerged from the Monte San Giorgio in Switzerland, did scientists realize they were looking at neck vertebrae from a strange reptile whose way of life they couldn't figure out. It took decades until the paleontologist Carl Chans showed in 1988 that ribs underneath the neck vertebrae interlocked, forming a horizontal and extremely stiff neck. That suggested an aquatic lifestyle, Mr. Speakman said, because such an unbending neck would have made life on land inconvenient. But paleontologists continued to argue whether Tonistrophoys actively pursued underwater prey or perched on shore, using its long neck like a fishing pole. To make matters more confounding, Diggs had found multiple skeletons of smaller Tonistrophoys on Monte San Giorgio. If they belonged to juveniles, as some suggested, why did they have different teeth, Mr. Speakman's team sought answers first by CT scanning a specimen of Tonistrophoy's head from a Zurich museum and reconstructing it, which proved difficult because all the bones were jumbled together and because the skull of Tonistrophoy's is very different from other reptiles in many respects. I very clearly remember the day the model was finished and I was the first to see the face of this animal after 242 million years he said. The reconstructed skull revealed several aquatic adaptations, nostrils positioned on the top of the snout like a crocodile, and long, curved fangs. Instead of pursuing prey actively, Mr. Speakman said, it probably ambushed them in murky water, lunging forward with its long neck to snap up fish. To test whether the bones of the smaller Tonistrophoys belonged to juveniles or a separate species, the team studied thin sections of bone prepared by Mr. Speakman's supervisor and co-author, Torsten Scheer. A close look at the little bone's interior revealed clear signs of a fully grown adult. That meant that two distinct species of Tonistrophoys were coexisting in the same waters, one large, one mini. The two closely related animals seem to have gone after different types of prey, the team reports in an example of the phenomenon known as niche partitioning. The larger animal, newly named Tonistrophoys hydroids, used its spike teeth for hunting fish and squid. The smaller species' teeth point toward a diet of marine invertebrates such as shrimp. It's not a stretch. This dinosaur had a 50-foot neck. Researchers developed a new estimate of the neck length of Maimanchisaurus, which foraged for foliage more than 150 million years ago in what is now China. Few creatures have pushed anatomy to its limits like sauropods. These supersized dinosaurs moved on pillar-like limbs that supported massive girth, wielded whip-like tails to ward off predators and used long necks to vacuum up foliage. While this entire group of dinosaurs is commonly referred to as long necks Maimanchisaurus, which roved around what is now China during the late Jurassic period, would have given other sauropods neck envy. In a study published Wednesday in the Journal of Systematic Paleontology, researchers estimate that Maimanchisaurus's neck stretched to a length of nearly 50 feet. Longer than the average school bus, its neck is the longest estimated of any sauropod species. It may be the longest neck on an animal ever observed. In 1987, paleontologists discovered the partial skeleton of a sauropod poking out of the rusty red sandstone of the dinosaur-rich Shishigu formation in northwest China. The remains were fragmentary, consisting mostly of a lower jaw, bits of skull and a couple of vertebrae, but they hinted at an enormous animal that thundered across marshy plains 162 million years ago alongside primitive tyrannosaurs. Researchers named the dinosaur Maimanchisaurus sinocanadrum and connected it to several other long-necked sauropods from East Asia, but Maimanchisaurus's true size remained an enigma. No other fossilized remains of the sauropod have been excavated, leaving scientists with only those couple vertebrae to examine. Andrew Moore, a paleontologist at Stony Brook University who studies sauropod anatomy, said that this was the case for many of the largest dinosaurs. What's particularly tantalizing and frustrating is that oftentimes, the longest necks belong to the things that are the least known in the fossil record for the simple reason that it's really hard to bury something that large dr. Moore, who led the new study, said. So he turned to the fossils of several close relatives of Maimanchisaurus, especially Zinjiang a slightly uh, 
No other fossilized remains of the sauropod have been excavated, leaving scientists with only those couple vertebrae to examine. Andrew Moore, a paleontologist at Stony Brook University who studies sauropod anatomy, said that this was the case for many of the largest dinosaurs. What's particularly tantalizing and frustrating is that oftentimes, the longest necks belong to the things that are the least known in the fossil record for the simple reason that it's really hard to bury something that large dr. Moore, who led the new study, said. So he turned to the fossils of several close relatives.